What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and another What's Up With video. Today we see what's up with Boston. Boston, Massachusetts is the most populous city in New England, covering 48.4 square miles. It's one of the oldest municipalities in the United States. Boston, in my opinion, is in the top five when it comes to most historical cities in North America. A lot of stuff went down there that really shaped the United States. And not all of it includes the Boston Red Sox and New England Patriots. There's a lot of historical stuff that went down here. All right, let's see what's up with Boston. Boston, like I said, is an incredibly historic city. It was founded in 1630 by Puritan settlers. Before the Puritans showed up, it was home to the indigenous Massachusetts people. In case it isn't glaringly obvious, that's where they got the name of the state. Back before the Europeans got here, there were several small native communities where Boston sits today. Different archeological finds show that they'd been fishing and hunting and collecting shellfish here for several thousand years. Boston is home to a lot of fur First, like the first public park, Boston Common, 1634. Yeah, it's still there. The first public or state school, which was the Boston Latin School in 1635. And they actually had the first subway system in 1897. Boston was originally named Tremontaine or Tremontaine. I've heard several different pronunciations of this. It actually means like three mountains. But later, the name obviously was changed to Boston. One of my favorite trivia facts about the United States is how Portland, Oregon got its name. It was actually a businessman from Maine and a businessman from Massachusetts. They started a little trading post and a ferry system, things like that. Turned into a little town, so they wanted to name it. They flipped a coin. Each one wanted to name it after their home city back on the East Coast, Portland, Maine, or Boston, Massachusetts. Obviously, Portland, Maine guy won the coin toss. Boston, for a long time, was the largest community, town, city, whatever it was at the time, in the 13 colonies until about the mid 18th century when Philadelphia outgrew them. Most of America's revolutionary events happened in the Boston area. Boston was the scene of things like the Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, which included several major historical figures from the Revolutionary War, like future President John Adams, this group called the Sons of Liberty. They were also involved in it in protests, but the Sons of Liberty included Sam Adams, Paul Revere, and John Hancock. Now, I'm really going to broad brush the Boston Massacre right now. Basically, what happened back in 1770, we had 13 colonies, but England felt they had 13 colonies. This, of course, created friction between most of the colonists and England. England had garrisons all over the 13 colonies, still claiming this was their land because we were royal subjects and just a bunch of nonsense. They just couldn't let it go. Then on March 5th, 1770, a group of colonists decide they were going to hassle the local garrison and a guard that was stationed out front. One thing led to another. The English troops fired on a bunch of unarmed protesters that were thrown snowballs at him. After the incident, the soldiers were arrested and they were put on trial. Future President John Adams was a lawyer and was tasked to defend the English troops. In the end, the jury sort of agreed with John Adams' argument and six of the soldiers were acquitted and two were actually convicted of manslaughter. The convicted soldiers were granted this thing called benefit of the clergy, which reduced their punishment from a death sentence to branding of the thumb in open court. This is where they actually take a hot iron and basically burn an M into your thumb so you're always labeled a murderer. Which, if you ask me, is a hell of a lot better than getting shot or hung, you know, basically put to death. I think most of you would agree. Unless, of course, you have a thumb fetish or something weird like that. Now, I'm going to jump ahead, and I promise you a lot of people will think that I've missed a lot, and I have. Boston really has so much history that I could just spend probably a whole five videos on Boston's history, and if you really got into it, you could probably do a Netflix documentary series of like 10 episodes, two hours each. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into Boston. But in 1872, the Great Boston Fire happened, making it Boston's largest fire and related to property loss in American history. The fire happened on November 9th, 1872, right around 7 p.m. in the basement of a commercial warehouse. It was finally contained
contained 12 hours later. This caused about $73 million worth of damage. That would be about 1.5 billion in 2020 numbers. 13 people died, including two firemen. Jumping way ahead again, this is more recent. On April 15th, 2013, two Chechen Islamist brothers detonated a pair of bombs near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, killing three people and injuring 264. Now, this is still going on in the news because one of the brothers survived a shootout with the police. Obviously, he's still in jail, but there's still some kind of court proceedings that are going on with him trying to get another trial and all kinds of weird stuff. I've always felt that if it's painfully obvious you did something like the videotape they have of this, you know, all the other evidence they have, including shooting it out with the police to try and get away, you know, you shouldn't get any appeals. I think you should just be convicted. That's just me. I'm kind of ignorant of the law, but I just think that makes a little more sense. Boston, like I said, is the largest city in New England, and it's the largest in Massachusetts. When it comes to their population, the city itself, not the entire metro area, had 589,000 residents in 2000. In 2020, they have 675,000. But the entire metro area has just under 5 million residents. That makes them the 10th largest metro area in the United States. When it comes to the race and ancestry portion of our little show here, Boston is very interesting. Let's talk about the race first. Boston is a predominantly white city. It is 43.9% white or Caucasian, whatever you want to call it. 23.1% black. Hispanic or Latino is 20.4%. Asian, 9.7%. And then 3.1% of the population is made up of residents with two or more races. Now, let's talk about the ancestry. Boston is known for being an Irish town. Maybe not as much these days, but that's kind of their history. It's a very Irish town. I mean, they got the Boston Celtics as their basketball team. That kind of tells you. They also got the Fighting Irish, their college team. That should tell you how Irish they are. And if you didn't catch that, no, that's Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish or Notre Dame. That's in South Bend, Indiana. I'm just kidding. But they do have the Celtics, and it is a very Irish town. How many of you were typing out an angry comment? About 8.13% of the population is Italian. And then across the board, it's 5% for just about everyone else. 5%, 5.45% Dominican. Puerto Rican is 5. Seven. Chinese is 4.57. German is about 5%. And this is probably the lowest number I've seen for people with Mexican ancestry. 1.12% of the population of Boston is from Mexico or Mexican ancestry. That's pretty low. I haven't seen it that low before. When it comes to religion, almost 60% of the population identifies as Christian. 33% claim they have no religious affiliation. And then there's about 10% that compose of Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, and other other faiths. Throughout the 18th and most of the 19th century, Boston's main industries were shipping and fishing, like any coastal major city should. One of the biggest industries in the Boston area is universities and colleges. They have a major impact on the regional economy, attracting over 350,000 college students and putting over $4 billion into the economy annually. They have some of the biggest colleges in the country there. Obviously, Harvard, MIT, Northeastern University, Brandeis. Tufts, Cambridge College, Boston College, Boston University, the list goes on. Boston is where a lot of our best brains end up for higher education. Also today, Boston is a center of scientific research. They actually receive the highest amount of annual funding from the National Institute of Health more than any other city. It's also really big in entrepreneurship and startups. They have over 5,000 startups working in Boston right now. Other industries that are big in Boston, probably finance, information technologies, biotechnologies, professional and business services, and obviously government stuff. When it comes to the neighborhoods of Boston, there's so many to choose from that could be bad, so many to choose from that could be good, and a whole bunch that are middle of the road. This is always the sticky part of these videos because everyone has serious opinions on what neighborhood is the worst, what is the best, what's in between, and I always get it wrong no matter what I say. That's why I just go by the numbers and their ranking. I always give people the Compton 
comparison right here. Anytime I've ever done a video about the worst places to live in Los Angeles or California, whatever, and I don't mention Compton, California, everyone freaks out. Like, how could you not mention Compton? Compton's the worst. No, Compton was the worst in the 1990s. It's gotten so much better. Is it a great neighborhood now? No. Is it still a bad neighborhood? Yes. Is it the worst? Absolutely not. But people still think it is the worst for some reason. It's just because that's their opinion. That's their feelings. Urban legends, rumors, movies make them think that. At, whatever the case. So we're going by the numbers. Probably the best neighborhood to live in in Boston, and there's probably about five to choose from, but the one that got the best scores is called West Roxbury. This neighborhood is just north of Georgetown on the Charles River. Well, at least part of it's on the Charles River. Their overall livability score is 81 which isn't a bad number. Their crime rate is 65% lower than the Boston average and 63% lower than the national average. The cost of living is still only 4% lower than Boston's average, but it's 39% higher than the national average. They have a population of about 33,000 and the median age here is 44 years old. When it comes to middle of the road neighborhoods, North Cambridge is a good choice. They've got a crime rate that's 38% lower than the national average. Their cost of living is kind of up there, 63% more expensive than the US average. Their housing is kind of high too, but it's not a bad place to live. To be honest, there's probably six others I could have mentioned to right in this spot, but we're going with North Cambridge. Most of the neighborhoods that have Cambridge in it are pretty decent. I mean, how bad can Cambridge be? They have two of the best universities in the world right in this neighborhood, Harvard and MIT. North Cambridge has a livability score of 78. And now to the worst neighborhood. So there's quite a few you could choose from, mostly because they got really high crime rates, Roxbury, South End, but probably the worst neighborhood because of poverty, crime, and all of it mixed together is Metapan. Metapan is on the south side of Boston, south of the Franklin Park Zoo. Unlike Cambridge, it doesn't have any universities or big name colleges, either public or private. They do have a lot of public housing. That's something. So Mattapan is probably not the most dangerous neighborhood in Boston. They've got a few other things that bring them down. Number one, their poverty is through the roof. Two, their crime is pretty high. It's 37% higher than the national average, which isn't the worst. But here's where it gets really weird. They've got a high cost of living. How's that happen? In a place that kind of sucks and everything else, they got a high cost of living. It's actually 30% higher than the national average. When you're in a bad neighborhood, it's supposed to be lower than the national average. Not Mattapan. They're making their own rules. Even their housing is 30% higher than the national average. Schools don't get a high mark. They get a D minus. Just all around not a great place to live. But it's expensive like it is a great place to live. It's like the used car lot of neighborhoods. When it comes to the stats that people are looking for when they're moving to a new place, this is what you're looking at when you take a look at Boston. Their crime rate is 6% higher than the national average. Their violent crime rate is 64% higher than the national average. Property crime isn't terrible. It's actually 4% lower than the national average. If you live in Boston, you got a 1 in 38 chance of being the victim of a crime. Boston is only safer than 14% of the cities in the US. The overall cost of living in Boston, it gets up there. Certain neighborhoods are very expensive, but overall, they're 46 percent higher than the national average when it comes to cost of living and they're 11 percent higher than the massachusetts state average housing is 104 percent higher than the national average in boston Typical home prices at like the average home price is around $580,000. That's for a three bedroom, two bath place. Obviously, it's a major city and the prices can get up into the multiple millions and you might be lucky to find a teardown for, you know, maybe 200 grand. Boston isn't a place that's really known for its food. I mean, they're not known for their pizza like maybe Chicago or New York is. They do have Boston pizza and it's usually wood fired. That's my experience at least. They do have good clam chowder just like any other place in New England. Here's some of the best places to eat in Boston. The first one probably isn't known for its quality. It's just known for its experience. Gotta have a hot dog at Fenway Park. Oh, so good. I could probably power down about five of them during one game. After that, you want to check out Brewer's Fork. It's in Charlestown, which happens to be Boston's oldest neighborhood. Yeah, it's kind of 
cool. But Brewer's Fork is right there where Bunker Hill and Vine kind of split. They serve really good wood fire pizza and they got more beers than they really need. Honestly, they got a lot of beers. I was there, I think in 2017. Uh, I don't think it'd been there that long, but it's definitely a good place to get some pizza and some beer. You also got Jean's Chinese Flatbread Cafe, which I find to be kind of strange. Never have I heard Jean with Chinese and flatbread and cafe all put together. It's kind of a uh, different. I have a friend that says this is the greatest place to eat. He loves the place. He also goes to a place, and he said I should mention this, J.J. Foley's. It's right in that same area, which is on Kingston between Bedford and Summer Street. It's east of Boston Common. Yeah, Boston's really not known for their food. I mean, baked beans and all that nonsense and Boston cream pie, but they're just not really known for too much. It's not like a hot spot for foodies, but they still got some good food. Boston's pretty much a walkable city. Most of its major tourist attractions are relatively close. If it's not walkable, I'm sure the subway will get you pretty close to where you need to go. If you visit Boston, you have to go to Boston Common. It's located in the heart of the city and it's known as America's oldest park, like I said. You can ride their swan boats that have been there since like 1870, I believe. They also have the oldest botanical garden in the United States, 24 acres. I'm not a fine art museum type guy. I like to go to natural history museums, but the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston is amazing. They also have the USS Constitution and Bunker Hill. The USS Constitution is like our oldest warship, and it's still going. It was launched in 1797, one of six of the original frigates authorized for construction by the Naval Act of 1794. Obviously, it's had some work done over the years, but it is still there. In the harbor with a nice museum and all that. Definitely go by and take a look at that. They got an aquarium down there, all kinds of good stuff. Bring the family. Also, you got Bunker Hill. If you know anything about American history, you know this was a major part of the Revolutionary War, and it's not too far from Brewer's Fork that we talked about earlier. While you're in Boston, you need to walk the Freedom Trail. This one might be a little rough during the winter, so if you're there during the spring or summer, definitely worth it. It's not like you're really hiking out in the woods or anything like that. You're going through the city. It just sucks to walk around in the winter. But the Freedom Trail is a three-mile hike that leads you past and into 16 of the city's most historic monuments and sites. They got this like little red brick footprint path thing that you just follow it and you end up someplace cool. You'll walk past where Paul Revere, Sam Adams, and John Hancock are buried. Just a bunch of other cool places. If you want to see something like this, Harvard and MIT are something you might want to check out. Really interesting stuff going on there besides just education. And of course, take in a game at Fenway Park. This is one of the most iconic baseball fields, parks, whatever you want to call it, in the United States. This place is legendary. Have a couple beers, couple hot dogs, look for Ben Affleck. That's what you do there. There's so many things to do in Boston, it's kind of crazy. Don't just spend one day there. If you're gonna go visit Boston, spend at least four days. Just see as much as you can. I'm missing a bunch of stuff on here. There's plenty to see and do. Boston has a ton of famous people from there. Let's just go over some of them. Chris Evans, who just got done playing Captain America, he was born in Boston. Mark Wahlberg and Donnie Wahlberg, both born in Boston. Uma Thurman, born in Boston. God, I haven't seen her in a while. What's she been doing? Edgar Allan Poe is from Boston. Edward Norton, such a good actor. He's from there. James Taylor, Clark Gregg. Donna Summers, who passed away in 2012, she was born in Boston. R&B singer, the late Bobby Brown is from Boston. Just kidding, he's not dead. Most people think he is though. Benjamin Franklin was born in Boston. Ben Affleck was not born in Boston. His brother Casey was born in Boston. They moved there from Berkeley, California when he was three. And he's like a diehard Boston fan. When he did that movie Gone Girl, he was supposed to wear a Yankees hat at one point and apparently it stopped production because he refused to wear it. That's weird. All right, that's today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you ever get a chance, visit Boston. It is such a historic city. There's so many things to see and do. It, I know it's expensive and I know it gets a little crowded, but it's still worth the trip. If you ever get a chance to live there and you can afford it, that's worth it too, I think. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.